The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that, that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, when I first joined my religious order, they send everyone to Belize, Central America. And I remember being in Belize and seeing a very funny sight one day. You see, in Belize, there's almost no traffic cops. There's no cops that will pull you over if you're going too fast. Instead, they have a lot of um, those things in the middle of the road, those big bumps, traffic bumps that you have to stop and go over slowly, or otherwise you hurt your car. Well, one day I was sitting in Belize, in Benque Viejo del Carmen, in Belize, and I saw the funniest sight. You know, everybody hates these traffic bumps. Well, here comes someone who's actually a member of my religious order on a motorcycle. And every time a traffic bump came up, he didn't slow down. He accelerated on his motorcycle and he hit it and did these little jumps and was having the best of times. And it was the funniest sight because the traffic bumps were having the opposite effect. He was speeding up and he was enjoying himself. He wasn't complaining about him. And he wasn't slowing down and upset. And so it was just a very marvelous sight that day. <laughs> Today, we are reminded that often when we pray about our problems to God, God does not take them away, but he helps us go through them. Often he helps us even see them as opportunities to improve ourselves. Just like those speed bumps, this fellow found a way to actually have fun. I don't recommend that, by the way. <laughs> and so there's a saying, every problem is an opportunity. So in both of our readings today, we see big problems that God made into opportunities. In our first reading, just after the death of Stephen, Saul, who later became St. Paul, who they threw their cloaks at the feet of at St. Stephen's death, goes on to persecute the church, goes on to throw men and women who are church members into prison. But what is happening here is the church scatters. They go from being one large community in Jerusalem to scattering across the known world, across Israel and even out to um, well, the rest of the Roman Empire. Later, we see St. Paul and St. Barnabas going out on their journeys finding little groups of Christians who had left Jerusalem at this time. And so this became a great blessing for the church. The word, the story of who Jesus was got spread to the ends of the earth because of this persecution. So talk about using something terrible for something good. And I can't say that without also mentioning our Lord on the cross. Some, the worst event in human history became the best event in human history, opened heaven, paid a price for all of us. Now in our gospel today, Jesus is telling a very difficult teaching. 
He's saying, I am the bread of life. And for you to get to heaven, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And as we'll see tomorrow, this is too much for many people. Many people are leaving. Many people are, stop, are not following him anymore. He's essentially saying two difficult things. One, that he is God and he's going to raise everyone. And two, you have to eat his body and drink his blood, which they don't understand yet. That all comes to understanding when he's crucified and at the Last Supper. That he's a Paschal lamb, and like every Paschal lamb, once it dies, for you to accept that sacrifice, you must receive him and eat him. And Jesus makes no apologies. He doesn't say that I'm only talking symbolically. I'm one day going to give you bread and wine. You're not actually going to do can cannibalism. He doesn't say any of that. Why? Because this is really going to be his flesh and his blood. This is, by Catholic teaching, going to be the truth of it, even though it looks like bread and wine. In other words, this is, seems like a great problem, but by letting the people leave, he's telling us he means it, that he is for real, and that when we come today in Mass, that is truly Jesus' body and blood. And so talk about, again, a problem that becomes an opportunity. I want to add that church teaching now is that both the body and the blood are the full Christ. So there are still, there are people that take this very literally that they have to receive both in mass. The church teaching is that if you're in the hospital and can't receive whole foods and you get a dropper of the precious blood, you get the full Christ. If you come to mass and it's a church not giving the precious blood and you just get the body, you get the full Christ, body and blood in the smallest crumb. And so that is our church teaching. You're not missing out. But as a priest, I still want to give you the chance to receive both every chance I get because it is a fuller reception. And I'm going to end today just mentioning our martyrs because another time in our church that we see terrible problems that become great opportunities is in our martyrs. People that give themselves so completely to God that they die for the faith. And it seems like it would be such a sad event, but it becomes actually a very happy event. The day of a martyr's death is recognized in the church later as their birthday into heaven. Whenever you have a feast day in the church, it usually is their death day because we recognize that they gave everything to Christ, that they chose heaven over earth, and they even died in a manner that Christ died. The early church, the first two, the first, uh, I think, it was either 500 or 1,000 years, the only saints recognized by the church were people that were martyrs. Now we recognize white martyrdom and a lot of other signs and miracles that help us verify people are in heaven, but martyrdom is a terrible thing that's an opportunity to give everything to God at the end of your life, to go on and be assured of heaven, giving up a little bit of time for an eternity of joy with Jesus. There's a saying in the church, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And we see that today in these readings. St. Stephen died. And he died in the presence of a young man named Saul who was doing terrible things. And it's still believed to this day that it was one of the prayers of Stephen dying was for Saul to be converted. And he was converted. He became St. Paul and he spread the faith to the ends of the earth. And so we're so thankful for our martyrs. They are our examples and our models. May we in our daily lives, even with this virus, find opportunity, find ways that God is using this to make us more holy to bring our families closer together and to be closer to him in all things. God love you.